All right, here we go. We're ready for the review. Congrats on making it through all the mastery checks. Let's just kind of give you a quick run through of everything in the chapter so you're good to go uh, for the test. So let's start with the first section, and I pulled this right off of the review uh, handout before the test. Make sure you know all this vocab. There's a lot of vocab in this chapter. You have to know it all. So go through it. Put a check mark by it if you know it. Yeah, I know it. Cute it right up two straight. Boom. Put a check mark by it. Make sure you're good to go. If not, go back. Look it up. I'm going to cover a bunch of them in this one. But look it up in your notes. Make sure you're okay with that. So what was section 1.1 all about? It was about points, lines, and planes. So we had a lot of vocab in this. So we know points, lines, and planes. Remember lines, we do something like put the line on top, A, B, it has to have the line on top. Plane, we use either the letter in the corner or we do something like A, B, C. So we use three letters. So for example, in this one, I could say the blue plane is what? I could say the blue plane is B, C, E. And what does that mean? Well, it means they are coplanar. Oops, I spelled plane wrong. <laughs> That's not so good. I'm going to hit myself. So remember the word coplanar means they all line on the same plane. Look at that handwriting. Woo, it's rough. Uh, so B, C, E, and D are not coplanar. D is up here in the yellow plane. Uh, what about collinear? Do you remember collinear? It means they all uh, are on the same line. I don't see any three points that are collinear. Maybe if they fell all on this, they would be collinear, right? something like this. Excellent. So we've got collinear points. We've got coplanar points. Anything else from this section? Um line we know we know plane we know point uh oh rays were in this one so remember i could draw a ray maybe something like this ray b c so remember it has to start at b and goes through c so b has to be first so that is a ray uh segments could be something like we could draw a segment it's not on any plane but from d to e remember it looks like with just the flat line on top so we know segments uh, we talked about space that's just everywhere floating around. Uh, excellent. Very nice. There were some postulates in here, things we assumed were true. The biggie is what happens when two planes intersect. When two planes intersect, they form a line. So that's a big one that's probably going to come up. Planes always form lines. If two lines intersect, where do they intersect? At a point. So uh, that's good to know for the first section. Awesome. Moving on. 1.2, we started looking just specifically at segments. I will give you these formulas. Uh, you're welcome on the test. You don't have to memorize. Remember, this is the midpoint formula. So capital M is midpoint. If I want to find what is the midpoint of a segment, where is the middle? It's just the average. And then this is the distance formula. How long is a segment? So if I give you two points, can you find it? Sure. This is like saying x1, y1. This is my first point. And this is like saying my second point, x2, y2. So if you want to set the midpoint, you just add your x's. It would be 7 plus negative 6 over 2. That's the x value. Then do your y's. y1 plus y2 would be negative 5 plus negative 8 all over 2. And if we simplify that, maybe I should put an m here. We're finding midpoint. Uh, 7 plus that is 1. So we're looking at 1 half. And we're looking at negative 13 halves. So something like that. Fractions are great. You can make them a decimal if you want. Uh, just be careful with your sign. So that's midpoint. What about distance? Well, you do the same thing. Well, not the same thing. You do this formula over here. Uh, you're looking for subtract your x's. So you just be careful with your signs. You've got 7 minus negative 6. And then you're going to square it. Plus subtract your y's. You've got negative 5 minus negative 8 squared. I'm going to change colors because there's going to be too much red down there. So remember, you change, change when you do this, negative, negative, so that's 13 squared, plus change those signs too, so we're looking at 3 squared, and again, when you square anything, it's positive, so there's a negative there, put in parentheses, that's the most common mistake there, 13 squared's got to be 169, 3 squared, these are always positive numbers, add them together, we're looking at the square root of 178. If you want to type in your calculator approximately two decimals, that's cool. Awesome. So looking at this, we also talked about congruency. We said something like this. Maybe I'll give you this and say, hey, mark the picture. CB is congruent to what BD? And I'll say mark the picture so you can do something like that. And maybe I'll say this is also true. Maybe I'll give you this. So I use two line segments here to show AB is congruent to B. So it's got to be given. You can't just assume it, but I will give it to you. It'll already be drawn or I'll say mark the picture, something like that. Uh, is another thing we talked about for congruent. Congruent means the same, so uh, this is the same as that. Awesome. And section 1.3, then we move to measuring angles. I'm going to have to pull a protractor. 
Okay, so we're going to measure this angle. So what do I do? You take your protractor and you line up that empty circle there right on the vertex of the angle. Remember, that's the vertex of the angle. And then you're going to spin it so that this line right here, the zero line, has to be on one side. I don't care which side you pick. In this case, I'm going to rotate it so it fits like this. So now that's lined up. And then if that's lined up with the zero here, you're using the bottom row because it goes 0, 10, 20. If you use this side with zero, you use the top row. So I'm on the bottom row. Where is it going to hit? Count these 10, 90. Looks like 1, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that looks like 1, 36. So you can come over here, maybe, and say that's 136 degrees. Excellent. What does that mean if it's uh, 136? It means it's an obtuse angle. Anything between, ni between uh, 90 and 180 is obtuse. Remember, acute was anything less than 90. And we had a right angle is 90. And then we had a straight angle is 180. So straight line. So those are the three different things that could be... Um, Man, my handwriting is rough. Something like that. Well, let's talk about angle bisectors. So just like a midpoint in the segments. Did I talk about midpoint last year? Midpoint cuts it in half. Uh, angle bisector cuts the angle. This bisects, bisects it in half. So we've got something like this. This is congruent to this. And I may give you something like this, like oh, all kinds of word problems. I could say this is 2x and this is 20, find x, or find the angle, or something like that. And you say, oh yeah, they're congruent. So 2x equals 20, you solve for x, x equals 10. Awesome, very good. Moving on, section 1.4, the addition postulate. So we did it for segment addition, and we also did it for angle addition. It just means that zo plus ot has got to equal the whole thing, zt. And it kind of makes sense. If this is 19 and this is 6, what is the total? It's 25. Now, on the test, I may give you something like, oh, I don't know. This is 3x, and you got to write an equation. you got to say, oh, yeah, 19 plus 3x equals 25. Solve for x, or actually, how long is ot? So you may have to say, oh, yeah, I can solve this. 3x equals 6, so x has got to be 2. If x is 2, I can plug it into ot and say ot equals 6. So that was the segment they add up. Angle is the same way. I'm saying this angle here plus this angle here, uh, 1 plus 2 is the whole angle. So this one actually looks like, we can't assume it's 180. It may look like it, but let's fill it in. It says uh, UVY is 2X, 2X plus 12, and YVW is 144. And, oh, we are going to assume this one's 180. So M UVW is a straight angle here. Or the whole thing anyway. So we're going to say the whole thing is 14x plus 12. So we're going to look at 2x plus 12 plus 144, the two angles. This angle plus this angle equals, I'm out of room here. Ah, super. Let's see if we can do that. All right, equals 14x plus 12. Good. Now let's go ahead and solve it. So I like to draw the line here to separate. Combine like terms on the left side. We're looking at 2x. 12 plus that is going to be 156. And that's just going to be 14x plus 12. And uh, can we get the x's on one side? I've got 14x on this side. So I'm going to bring this over. I always go to the wherever the more x's are. So we're looking at 156 equals 12x plus 12. Solve for x, I'm going to subtract from 12 to both sides. We're looking at 144. And then how do we solve for that? Divide both sides by 12, we get 12. So x is 12. If they wanted me to find that angle, I could plug in x into the equation. You know, uvy equaled 2x plus 12. So if I wanted to, I could plug that in and say 2 times 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 12 which equals 36, which it was supplementary, so it's 180. Awesome, which brings us to our next section. 1.5, be able to name all of these angles. So adjacent angles are just next to each other. So maybe we can find, there's a, adjacent angles everywhere. I'm going to number them. Here we go. 1, 2. Those are adjacent angles. They share the same thing. So 1 and 2 are adjacent uh, What else we got? Vertical angles. It's where two lines intersect like 3 and 4. So angle 3 and angle 4 are vertical. Do you see any complementary in there? 
Sure, there's the right angle. You're looking for that right angle. So it looks like 5 and 6 here. 5 and angle 6. Supplementary angles add up to 180. So we're looking for somewhere. Uh, there's a straight line. So what are we at here? 7 and 8. I'll put an 8 in there. But look at 3 and 4 or 4 and 8. Or I'm sorry, 3 and 7. See how they're on this line? So I could say angle 3 and angle 7. And a linear pair is actually angle 3 and angle 7. Because linear pairs are always supplement. Well, I should have done it the other way around. A linear pair is on this straight line is always supplementary. Supplementary doesn't mean linear pair. In this case, it happens to be they could have been separated. But uh, in this case, they were the same. So linear pair is that straight line. Supplementary is they add up to 180. Awesome. That is the whole uh, chapter. Good luck on the test. I hope it goes well. And uh, peace out.